If someone uses these seven phrases, they lack empathy and understanding. Have you experienced a dialogue with an individual so void of empathy that you question their place in your life? You're familiar with the archetype, those who exhibit such a deficiency in compassion and emotional intelligence, that conversing with them feels akin to speaking to an impassive barrier. However, it's essential to recognize that not everyone possesses the skill to discern another person's emotions, it's simply not a part of their nature. So, how can you identify these individuals resembling real-life non-player characters, NPCs? It's uncomplicated. Consider these seven phrases, if someone frequently employs them, chances are they lack empathy and a true understanding of others. 1. You're blowing it out of proportion. This statement comes across as highly dismissive, completely overlooking the emotional aspect. It lacks empathy, failing to acknowledge the person's feelings. While it's possible that the individual is overreacting or making a big deal out of something seemingly insignificant, it doesn't change the fact that they are experiencing anxiety. A similar scenario brings to mind a friend who used to become extremely stressed when confronted with any form of criticism. During their annual performance review, they were told they needed to improve as a team player. Despite the overall assessment not being entirely negative, my friend was solely focused on the perceived shortcomings. In our post-appraisal conversation, they expressed intense anxiety, fearing job loss and the inability to pay rent. While my initial inclination was to urge them to snap out of it and avoid blowing things out of proportion, I refrained from doing so, recognizing the importance of understanding their perspective. Instead, I actively listened to their fears, maintained a calm demeanor, and did my best to validate their feelings while gently guiding them towards a more positive mindset. 2. Stop being irrational. Certain individuals tend to be worriers, preoccupied with various concerns. They are inherently anxious people who find it challenging to stay present, often dwelling on past mistakes or an uncertain future. An example of irrational anxiety that many experience is the fear of flying, with a substantial 40% of the population grappling with some form of aviophobia. Despite air travel being statistically one of the safest modes of transportation, it doesn't alter the emotional experience for those who fear flying. This concept may elude individuals lacking empathy. Consequently, they might respond with comments like, stop being irrational. It's crucial to remember that, for someone afraid of flying, their fear is not irrational, they genuinely perceive boarding a flight as a risky undertaking. 3. You need to get over it. Many of us have likely used this approach before, I certainly have. However, the reality is that it lacks a certain level of empathy. While your intentions may be to help and support, proposing solutions might not be the most empathetic approach. Even if your suggestions stem from a place of empathy, they may not effectively convey empathy itself. It's akin to advising someone to cheer up or don't stress sentiments that oversimplify complex emotions. When someone is going through emotional pain, such as after a traumatic breakup, it's more beneficial to offer a listening ear than to immediately jump into problem-solving mode. After all, when it comes to matters of the heart, time is often the most significant factor, and no amount of quick problem-solving can alleviate the pain, they simply need time to heal. 4. It could be worse. Drawing comparisons isn't the most empathetic approach. It can be tempting, particularly when someone is distressed over what may be considered a first-world problem, a minor issue within the context of a relatively high standard of living. For instance, if someone is upset about not having a convenient place to charge their $1,000 smartphone, a person lacking empathy might respond with, it could be worse, you could be starving and homeless. While this statement holds some truth, it overlooks the fact that mental health and well-being are not relative. Even individuals with significant wealth can experience depression, and their emotions deserve validation just like anyone else's. While practicing gratitude and acknowledging our fortunate circumstances is important, it's equally acceptable to acknowledge and address feelings of sadness, even in the context of relative comfort. 5. I told you so. A know-it-all is universally disliked, representing one of the most irritating personality traits. 
This tendency often surfaces when we've made a mistake or disregarded someone's advice. While it may boost your ego to proclaim, I told you so, it doesn't convey much empathy. This underscores a crucial point, our egos wield considerable influence, sometimes prompting peculiar behavior. In such instances, the desire to showcase one's intelligence overrides any inclination toward understanding or support. The ego clamors to be acknowledged, broadcasting that you were astute enough to foresee the outcome. But in reality, who really cares? Boasting about your insights tends to isolate you from others. It's far more constructive to remain humble and embody the qualities of an understanding, supportive friend. 6. Wow, you're still upset about that. Here's an instance of a passive-aggressive expression. Not only does it dismiss the validity of someone's emotions, but it also suggests that they are somehow mistaken or unusual for still feeling down. However, it's essential to keep in mind that people cope with distressing events in diverse ways. While you might have completely moved on from a past partner in just six months, others may take six years, or they may never fully recover. This statement overlooks the importance of acknowledging their feelings, revealing a significant lack of understanding. As always, merely being there for your friend and offering a listening ear might not appear monumental, but it serves as a meaningful starting point. 7. I can't change how I feel. Have you encountered someone so unyielding that they adamantly resist altering their opinions, beliefs, and overall perspective? If you have, they've likely uttered phrases like, I can't change how I feel, along with statements such as, I've always done it this way, and, I don't care what you think. This mindset is indicative of a fixed mindset, aligning with a lack of empathy and essentially conveying an attitude of, it's my way or the highway. Individuals with a fixed mindset tend to view themselves as inherently either good or bad at something, with little room for improvement. Conversely, those with a growth mindset are characterized by open-mindedness, empathy, and a genuine belief in their ability to adapt, learn, and change through dedication and practice. Reflecting on it, every phrase in this compilation exudes a fixed mindset, offering insight to identify individuals who may struggle with empathy and understanding. If you enjoyed watching this video don't forget to like subscribe and turn on the notification bell, so you don't miss any new videos. Let us know your thoughts about this video in the comments section down below and feel free to stay and enjoy it until the end, also make sure to check out our next highlighted video and we will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe.